Do you hear the call? The Bible, I was reminded as I was putting the sermon together this week, the Bible is full of calls. We heard two today. Call to Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah called to preach a word to the people. A call to share God's vision for Israel. Both comfort in present distresses, hope in the future, and condemnation for past transgressions. This same prophet called in the story we heard today will later say, Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Isaiah's call and responsibility is an arising, a getting up, a getting out, preaching a distant work. And then we have the summoning of these fisher people. This happens early in the Gospels, repeatedly. Christ encounters people on the roads, on the byways and highways, by the lakeside, and he says, get up. Get up, Christ says, and follow me. And they do. I've preached on this before, but I think it's worth noting again today. Get up and leave your nets, the method for your livelihood. Leave your father in the boat, the man who deserves your respect. Get up and follow me, says Jesus Christ. Leave what you have known and where you have been. Leave your homes and your families. Leave your security and your foundation. Get up and follow me. And this is a theme throughout the scriptures over and over again. People are summoned out from where they are. Adam and Eve ordered out of Eden into the world. Abram, commanded by God to leave his home and to come to a new land. Moses, summoned to lead the people out of Egypt. Elijah and Elisha, Jeremiah and Amos and Joel and Micah and Isaiah and Jonah, prophets called out of their comfortable context and into speaking and preaching and condemnation and oppression by the people who did not want to hear their messages. Sometimes, in miserable places, these prophets were called out to preach. Christ summons disciples and apostles from all over the place, and they just come. Some are troubled by all that they have when they hear God's call. A rich young man is told to sell all his possessions and follow. He walks away too distraught to follow the instructions, for he has much. But many, many drop whatever they have and they just come. Just follow. Paul is probably my favorite of all the call narratives in the scriptures. He literally gets blinded by the light of God and truth and right. And having heard the word, having heard the name of the one that he was previously persecuting, he comes out of the place that he has been. He follows the call. Our God, my friends, is a calling God, a summoning God. We hear about a shepherd God, I think. And we imagine things being pretty peaceful, this guy walking with a stick and sheep sort of following along behind him. But if any of you have ever seen shepherding or cattle herding go on, you know that it doesn't work that way, that there are calls and goading and pushing. You've got to yell, you've got to shout, you've got to make the sheep know where they're supposed to go. Our God is a shouting shepherd, calling and yelling, summoning us to follow. And sometimes... There are times in our lives when we have this good fortune that God calls us out of the pasture and into the sheepfold. Out of the wilderness and into a home. More often, far more often in the scriptures, our call is not a call in, but a call out. A call out of ourselves. A call out of our community as we know it. A call out of our comfort and into something new and different. It's that time it's language time. I'm sorry, I'm going to take a few minutes here and do some Latin and Greek. I'm sorry, except I'm not. You all know Emmanuel Church, right? What do they used to be called? Their old name. Iglesia Emmanuel. That first word, Iglesia, comes to us from Spanish, through Latin, and originally from Greek. 
The Greek word was a technical term. It was a governing body, a bit like our Congress in the ancient city of Athens, a large assembly of voting members, and it was called the ecclesia. Ecclesia. It's the root of the word ecclesiastical, by the way, also the book Ecclesiastes. That word, ecclesia, the root word, the word that they use for church in Latin and French and Spanish and I imagine Portuguese and Romanian, that word means the people who have been called out. The summoned people. That's the church. That's how we're described every time the word church shows up in the scriptures. That's who we are. We are a summoned people, a called people. I love the Latin word for the same idea, the word evoked. Evoked. We are evoked as a body of believers like memories called out of the depths of our minds. We're called, surely. We're called by God. This is no question. But I submit to you today that it matters not only that we are called, but where we are called. We are called out. It's lovely. I am made so happy by the way we care for one another in this community. The way we fellowship and love with old friends and family. It is a blessed thing to be in relationships with our friends. But brothers and sisters, Doesn't everybody do that? Don't all peoples love their friends, their families, those people that they know well? Can't you see the same activities down in the taverns and bars? Can't you see loving fellowship at the Elks Club or Kiwanis? Doesn't everyone love their friends? Isn't it much, much, much harder to love people who are out from where you are. People who are different from where you are. To see people whose hair or clothing just seems offensive to you. Those tattoos and those piercings, they're just not right. They're not decent. Isn't it much more difficult to love and welcome those people just the way that you would welcome your sister? Or your brother. Isn't it much harder to greet strangers who do not speak your language correctly or who come from another land or whose skin color or culture is unfamiliar to you? Isn't it much harder to accept and love them as children of God? Isn't it much harder to meet the homeless, the mentally ill, the handicapped, people whose experience is so drastically different from your own, people so far out of your understanding of right and good and learn to believe that God sees them as right and good. To encounter the people whose political opinions and lifestyle choices are so far off your personal charts, so distant from what you were taught as a child that you have no words, no way to understand where they're coming from, and still, just as you would say to your dearest friend to say to those people, The peace of Christ be with you. Yeah. It is. Much harder. Much, much, much harder. It is no easy task to submit to the offensive mercy and the disturbing justice of God that knows no boundaries of nations, or skin color, or language, or culture, or identity. It is even worse. It is even more difficult. It is even more of a strain on our resources to be agents of God's justice and mercy, extending to all God's children the gifts that we have received in abundance. You, my friends, have a summons, a call. It is not a call to coffee hour or to Bible study. 
It is not a call to the tricky tray or to a luncheon. It's not a call to all the familiar trappings of our church life. There's nothing wrong with those things. They are blessed. They are worthy. But your call, above and beyond that day-to-day work, your call is out! Out of your comfort zones. Out of your pews. Out of this building. Out of your friends' houses. Out! Your call is out into the community, loving and serving everybody. You are a people called out. Whether you like their hair or their voting record or the people they love, you are called out to love them. Make it happen. Amen. Our hymn of response for today is a special pick. I was reminded in preparing this week. Today is Reformation Sunday, the day when we celebrate the history of our denomination and the history of Protestantism in general. When we celebrate a day that we took on new thinking about Scripture, new thinking about what it meant to be the church, new thinking about how to be in relationship with God. Our hymn for today is number 260, A Mighty Fortress. It was composed by Martin Luther to the tune of a popular German drinking song. And it is still sung today, many, many times on on Reformation Sunday, celebrating the history from whence we have come. Let us stand together and sing.